know that our military provides some of the most state-of-the-art training that exists anywhere in the world. And so when they return home, we want to make it as easy as possible for them to enter our workforce. We also successfully piloted with the National Guard the Military Commercial Driver License Skills Test Waiver that allows a qualified service member or veteran to apply for a CDL without road skills testing. The test will be waived for veterans with two years of military experience operating vehicles, uh, representative of the class of license applied for. Uh, a program that was established, we announced a few years ago with uh, Register Caprilli and Secretary Nee uh, for making the change to allow veterans to add a veteran's indicator on their driver's licenses and their state IDs. As of uh, last week, the RMV has issued more than 11,000 license ID cards with the veteran's indicator. Well, the Valor Act, which Senator Rush uh, and, and the governor uh, uh, the governor signed that. Senator Rush is one of the, the sponsors of that legislation. Uh, allows us, has had us working on this issue uh, relating to credentialing, CDLs, other types of professional licensures mm -hmm. that people need almost in every field in the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. So if people are interested in a particular field, mass uh, advi vetadvisor.org can provide some of that information. But Thank beyond you. that, in June of this year, we'll also have uh, every one of the state universities, the UMass system and community colleges uh, having guidelines in terms of recognizing credit, military time, mm -hmm. uh, academic courses, other places, so we can make it easier as well for veterans to access or their family members who are accessing our public colleges and universities, the GI Bill. We want to, again, give them as much credit that, uh, for what they've already earned rather than having to take uh, redundant courses. Between the governor, the lieutenant governor, the secretary, the registrar, uh, we have a team effort. It's folks working together to ensure that Massachusetts doesn't talk about veterans' issues. We're doing what needs to be done to help our veterans. And uh, people are sometimes amazed when I tell them that when they rank the 50 states on how the 50 states treat their veterans at Massachusetts consistently is ranked number one. So the Valor Act is getting people to work in ensuring that them and their families uh, have economic stability here in Massachusetts, and that's a lot of what we're doing. We want to make sure that when veterans do come back, uh, that we have uh, great opportunities here in the Commonwealth to get them moving full speed ahead, and that's a big component of the Valor Act because we want to, uh, it, it really, um, it, it kind of goes to the whole uh, picture of ensuring that our veterans are treated with the dignity and respect that they certainly deserve. Well, it certainly has been so well stated here and that the rest of the country is starting to pay attention to the leadership of Massachusetts as well. Well, that's what we hear, and uh, I think you heard the lieutenant governor, it's all the secretary of Veterans Affairs today, and they'll tell you that when they travel around the country, uh, they are hearing from other states, and they want to know what we're doing and what the, what the key to success and what mm -hmm. the secret is, and we're happy to share it because mm -hmm. we want to take what we're doing here in Massachusetts and see it replicated ar across the country uh, while remaining number one in how we treat our veterans and their families. Uh, this administration, I'm very proud, um, the Patrick Murray administration has teamed up with the legislature, with the judicial branch of government, so that all three branches uh, are giving full attention and doing everything that they can in order to honor those who serve our country. Um, in our town seal, you'll see um, before you leave, uh, emblazoned is one of our first veterans, Captain Aaron Guile whose um, image is captured in the Norwood Town seal. Um, and it shows an image of Captain Aaron Gow putting his plow aside, picking up his musket uh, to arrive in time to fire upon the British troops in the Battle of Lexington and Concord. That is an important symbol for us. This hall is a constant reminder, lest we forget. So we must do what we can, the Valor Act, is a good beginning. It yet again puts Massachusetts on the map as a leader of, of the 50 states in honoring members of our armed services. So I'm going to wrap up by just saying two words on behalf of a grateful community here in Norwood. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for the honor you give us as fellow citizens. And thank you for your service to this country and the protection of this country. May God bless you. May God bless the United States of America. I can tell you uh, that uh, this piece of legislation uh, personally uh, would have affected me. When I was deployed to Desert Storm, I came back. I had driven uh, 5,000 accident-free miles 
and everything from tractor trailers, and, and at the time they were five tons, with military equipment that would have translated over easily to commercial. And I remember going into uh, Explore, you know, when I first came home, about, uh, about translating those, uh, those skills, and it was almost like, at the time, you know, well, you know, we don't really count any of that. Um, you know, you just got to kind of start over right at the beginning again, and it didn't make sense to me. This will, uh, this will bring uh, some very tangible and, and some very uh, needed and much sought after uh, uh, benefit. You know, we know for many years the military uh, training that you received uh, while you were on active duty was comprehensive, it was extensive, particularly in today's world where you're doing deployments overseas, operating under difficult conditions. Mm -hmm. And in particular today, you know, my story coming back in 91, uh, again, 5,000 accident-free miles in a combat zone, Commendable. and yet, you know, you come in and it's like, well, you know, we don't recognize that. You know, you're, you're, you're starting basically with someone who's never been behind the wheel of a truck before. We should be recognizing that up front. This is one provision today that we announced as part of the Valor Act for commercial driver's licenses, but it's only the beginning. We're doing this around uh, Division of Public Licensure is looking at, you know, construction licenses. Outstanding. Um, you know, we're looking at military educational credits and transferring those over to, uh, to, to our public education system. Mm. Um, you know, understanding that these folks have uh, this extensive training, this extensive background, we need to capitalize it, not just because it's good for them, but it's great for us, and it's great for our businesses as well. Today, we are one of three dozen states that offer a skills test waiver to qualified military personnel and to veterans who want to obtain a commercial driver's license. We've had a successful pilot program with the National Guard, and we believe easing the commercial driver's licensing process for our qualified military personnel and veterans is a tremendous customer service. Thank you to the leaders here today and the organizations they represent for your steadfast dedication to that cause. Thank you to Senator Rush, former Representative Valley, for drafting the bill and to the Governor for signing the Valor Act. We have also benefited from our partnership with the Massachusetts Registry of Motor Vehicles, particularly the CDL licensing. The RMV was willing to work with the Massachusetts National Guard in standardizing the written documents required to make the waiver successful. We fully expect that our soldiers and airmen will take advantage of this great opportunity. Thank you to the soldiers, airmen, Marines, sailors, Coast Guardmen, and most importantly, thank you to the families. We started with the, uh, from our standpoint, we, because we had transporters and, and, and 88 mics, and truck drivers in the military, uh, they've already done it, so we've done it. Um, it, it we did it with a pilot program. Uh, and successfully, so they actually went and they have their commercial driver's license. So, you know, I know that the Valor Act deals with not only the commercial driver's licensing, but 31 other licensing programs, and so the intent is to open that up for those others. Um, and we welcome that because we don't just have uh, transporters, we, we have, you know, uh, combat medics and, and mm -hmm. other um, uh, MOSs, military occupational specialties, that can take advantage of that. So, um, so that's great. What we see here today, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is indicative of the leadership role that Massachusetts enjoys nationally, and we take a back seat to no one in terms of providing the very best of benefits and service, services to our veterans in the Commonwealth, and it's something we can all be very proud of. And thank you for your service, and again, to each and every one of you today, Americans all, thanks very much for your attendance today, and God bless every one of you. Thank you.